Hello, this is Mr. Dorsey again. I'm going to show you how to construct regular polygons. I'm going to put it in between here because a regular polygon is same side lengths and same angle lengths. Forgive my handwriting. So constructing regular polygons, same side lengths and same angle lengths. So we came up with in class the other day a formula for this, and that formula was uh, for any polygon with n sides, I'm going to n, n equals number of sides, This formula, n minus 2 times 180 degrees, gives you the number of total degrees inside polygon. So that's true of all polygons, but we're going to construct regular polygons. So the number of sides minus 2 times 180. So, for example, we showed in my previous video, if we did a square or a quadrilateral of any form, n minus 2 times 180 is this. n is 4 sides minus 2, in parentheses, times 180, gives me 2 times 180 degrees, gives me 360 degrees. And we know that's true. Because the square, if you think four 90 degree corners, four times 90 degree angle is 360 degrees. That's true. So we're not going to bother with the square. We're going to move on to more advanced things like this. Let's do construction of a pentagon. I'm going to do one with one inch sides. <clears throat> pentagon which as you probably remember is five sides, like the building in Washington. And I'm gonna construct it with one inch sides. And sometimes you're given the total degrees inside and sometimes you're not. Um, I'm gonna calculate it here, but sometimes you're gonna be given it. So if I calculate N minus two times 180 on a pentagon, pentagon has five sides, five, I plug that in, minus two, times 180. Oh, that's 3 times 180. That means my total degrees inside of a pentagon is 540 degrees. So now I'm going to construct a regular pentagon with one inch sides with 540 degrees total. Well, how do I figure out how many um, degrees each angle is? Well, it's simple. If I have Pentagon has five sides and five angles. Every polygon has the same number of sides as it has angles. A quadrilateral has four sides, four angles. Triangle has three sides, three angles. Pentagon has five sides and five angles. So I'm going to divide 540 divided by five to get the number of degrees per side. So I'm going to do that. 540 divided by five. Five goes into five one time. Uh, four, five does not go into four yet. So I'm going to do that. Bring the zero down. Five goes into 48 times. Five times eight is 40. Oh, look at that. 108 degrees. Exactly. So I'm going to have five 108 degree angles and five one inch sides. Now you may wonder how I go about constructing this. I'm about to show you. So you will take your ruler and I'm going to take this ruler and I'm going to pick um, one inch now, my stand is in the way, so I can't really do it from zero to one unless I spit, spin it upside down. So forgive me for that. Like that. So there's one inch. On the ends of my one inch, I'm going to put vertexes or vertices, actually. And then I'm going to construct one of these 108 degree angles. So I'm going to put my protractor on top. And again, I'm putting the vertex inside that hole where these this intersection is and my line goes through zero now i'm going to mark it at 108 degrees 
So I have to come around here. 100, 110, 108 would be two marks before that. Now I'm doing this in pen so it shows up better because I'm filming at night. I never recommend doing it in pen for you because we mess up all the time and hopefully I'll do it correctly. Now the other thing I want to show you here is I'm going to connect these but I only need to do one inch. One inch side. I'm not going to go all the way to my mark which is where my protractor went. I'm only going to do one inch so I can't turn my my ruler around into my stand but I'm going to draw towards that dot only one inch so I'm going to go from here to here right there that's one inch exactly you have to attend to the exactness attend to the details so now I have one inch I have 108 degrees and I have another one inch now I need to make another 108 degrees from here so I'm going to do that. Now, again, I meant to make this so I could spin the pro the paper around, not the protractor. I'm not going to be able to do it on this video because of the way my stand is set up. I'm going to have to start getting a tripod like one of my students suggested to do these. But right now it's a makeshift. <laughs> it's a makeshift tripod. So I'm going to do another 108 degree angle. Again, I'm constructing it properly. The line goes through zero. I'm going to go to 108. And I put a mark. Now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to not go all the way to that dot because that's too long. I'm just going to go from my vertex out exactly one inch and I'm going to stop. So now that I've done that, I'm going to put another vertex on this. And then I'm going to do it again. Now, again, I'm spinning my protractor. You can spin your paper so that this is still right side up for you, but I can't do it due to my photos, my camera stand. Okay, so here we go again. Vertex is where it belongs. I'm going to do 108. Whoops. See, I moved it. So you got to go back and fix it or it'll mess it up. All right. So here we go. 100 to 110. Here's 108. Whoop, I got 110. I got 109. There we go. Right in there going to be at the closest edge of that. So again, I'm going to go from, from my vertex toward the inside edge of this to get, but I'm going to go towards it, not all the way to it, because I only want to go one inch. And I stop at one inch. Now, if I have done this correctly, my connecting line between these two vertices will be one inch long. And it is. Now, the only question is, Will my last angles measure out at 108? And I really hope they do. Kind of depends on how big my vertex is. That looks like a one inch line. Let's measure it. It is. Now let's measure the angle and see if I got the angle right. <laughs> Crossing my fingers. Sometimes when you do that many angles, if you're off by a smidge, your last angle will be off by a smidge which for our purposes is probably okay. If this line were to continue, it would go up through 108. So I did well. So I have, the only thing I have to do yet is to mark one inch, one inch, one inch. Now, 108 degrees, 108, 108, 108, and 108. Now I forgot to put all my little arcs so i need to do that all right now i have it all marked that is a properly constructed five-sided pentagon which pentagons are with one inch sides and equal angles so it's a regular pentagon a regular polygon a regular pentagon uh, and some of the projects we have coming up will have something very similar to this okay now i'm going to show you how to do a regular hexagon I don't think I have to do them all, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to take that out of the way. I'm going to try and see if I can make this one so that I can spin the paper to show you that method. I hope. I'm also hoping nobody calls during this video because that will mess up the ending of the video. It's always a race to make sure nobody calls. Okay, so if I do a regular hexagon, I'm going to use one inch sides again on that just because 
And a hexagon, you probably remember, has six sides. So I'm going to do the six sides. I'm going to do a one inch side and I'm going to put a vertex on each end. And then I'm going to figure out what's my angles in it in a hexagon. Oh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. My angles in a hexagon would be n minus two. So six sides minus two times 180 gives me four times 180 equals um, 720 degrees. And if I divide 720 by six sides, six angles, I'm going to divide it by six angles to see. Six goes into seven one time. Six goes into 12 two times. Oh, that's easy. Bring the zero down 120 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to do 120 degrees on each angle. And I think I left just enough room to make my shape. So let's go ahead and do that. 120 degrees. I feel like I'm on borrowed time with my space on this video. If it ends abruptly, you'll know why. 120 degrees. I mark it. Let's make sure I did that right. I don't, I'm not sure I put the vertex in the right spot. And then I put the line through zero. I did. It's important to do that. Make sure you're exact. So I'm going to take my ruler. And here I'm going to try and do it the way you would do it. And I'm going to go from zero to one. Not everybody's brains work like mine do, where I can count backwards and forwards and so forth while I'm doing it without thinking. So I go from my one vertex to my next. I put a vertice there. And then I'm going to spin my paper. Why am I doing that? So I don't have to spin my protractor. Again, I'm going to put the vertex in this point here. I'm going to go to 120 degrees here. Okay, and again, my line goes through zero. Make sure you do that on every one. And then I'm going to draw my one inch line again from my vertex toward this point. Not to it because I'm only going one inch, right? So I go one inch. Yes, the sound effects are free in the video. Occasionally I make sound effects like that because, you know, we're all still kids at heart, I think. Okay, now let's see. I'm going to go ahead and spin my paper again. Okay, now I'm going to do another one from this new vertex. Every time I make a new vertex on the end of one of these line segments or sides, I start again. So I'm going to go to 120 here. Now I'm kind of getting into my math figures here, but that's all right. I'm going to put my dot, and I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to try to connect this and stay in the camera view. And I'm not going to go all the way to the dot. I'm just going to go one inch. And I go from zero to one, exactly. It looks like I'm doing pretty well so far. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Now that I have it spun, I'm going to put my protractor on here. I'm going to put the hole, the vertex in the hole, and make sure the line goes through zero. I'm going to mark 120 again. And I'm going to connect this. I'm going to spin it right now just so it's easier and go from zero to one towards that that dot again this dot is just where the protractor measure but it's not the vertex i'm going to there exactly now if everything works out right this last line will be one inch if i did it right it looks like i did it right so that's good then the only other test is yes that is one inch the only <laughs> my ruler slipped a little bit but the only other test is, are these 120 degree angles? And I just need to check it and ballpark it and see. And I think if I look and I get this on the zero and on the vertex, this line would go up through 120. So I did okay. Now, last step is this. I'm going to mark every side one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. And I'm going to mark the angle measures. 120 degrees, 120, 120, I better put my arcs, 120, sorry it's a little sloppy, 120, I feel the, the need to hurry up before this video shuts off. Okay, so that 
is how to construct a regular hexagon. I'm going to write on it, regular hexagon, six-sided. Regular means same side measurements and same angle measurements. Like an, uh, an equilateral triangle is a regular triangle. It's a regular polygon like these are. So a regular polygon hexagon or a regular hexagon looks like this. So that should give you a hint. You should be able to do this with any of them. Most times you're given this total amount of degrees and you just have to divide it by the number of angles. So if you have six sides, you have six angles. I'm dividing 720, which is the total degrees by six angles, and I get 120 degrees per angle. And that is why I made these at 120 degrees. My paper looks a little funny because I had to prop this camera at an angle, but you get the idea. All right, that's it.